Welcome. I'm going to show you how you can get a list of all the email IDs of people who attended meetings with you. Why would I want to do that? I want to follow up on something or their customers. I want to send them newsletters, mailers, cross-sell, product promotions. So any kind of such activity, you will need a list of emails. I am not going to export calendar to a CSV and extract the list because I'll have to repeat that process. The method which I'm going to show you uses Power Query and Excel or Power BI. One time you set it up and anytime you want to update it, just refresh. So here I have calendar. So this is a sample meeting. I have two required attendees and two optional attendees. Now let's go to Excel and extract all the calendar data. To do that, you go to the data menu. We are going to use Power Query, get data. We have to go to online services, Microsoft Exchange Online. It will ask you the email ID and you will have to log in. Because it's Exchange Online, I'm going to choose Microsoft account and sign in. Click on connect. Now at this point, Excel is connecting to your mailbox. We have emails, calendars, contacts and tasks. Click on calendar, but do not click on transform data. Open this load drop down, click on load to and choose only create connection and click OK. So nothing will happen. It will just create a connection to calendar. Double click on this connection. Now it will open Power Query. So let's filter out what we don't want. First of all, it may have multiple calendars in it, including event calendars, holiday calendars and so on. You open this filter and only keep the calendars you want. So for demo purpose, I'm just going to keep the base calendar. If you don't want to see this analysis, just go to the view tab and remove column quality and column distribution. Now for demo purpose, I'm not going to get all the rows. I just want 50 rows and that to the recent ones. In real life, you will want all the rows. But for now, I'm going to go to the start, go to home and sort it in descending order. So the latest appointments come here. The next thing is I'm going to go to keep rows, keep top rows 50. There is a column here is all day event. We want to eliminate all day events. So I'll remove true. That means I don't want all day events. I only want regular meetings. These are the rows I want. Now I have to look for the columns which I need. I'm only interested in email IDs and there are only two columns where we get email ID. Required attendees, other is optional attendees. So I'll select required attendee, press the shift button and then click on the second one. Now right click on that and say remove other columns. So we have exactly what we want. For every meeting, there can be multiple required attendees. So their names are in a table. Now if I want to see what is in a table, generally people just click on this and then a new step will be added here. Don't do that. Right click on one of the rows table and say add as new query. That way it will just expand it separately without disturbing the first query. So this is what it is showing me. The email IDs of people who are required attendees for that meeting. This query I created just for demo purpose. So I'm going to delete it. Now coming back to our calendar, we have two columns. So far what we have done, all these steps I definitely need. But now I need a separate table to manage required and a separate table to manage optional. So I want all the steps still here. And from now onwards, I want different steps. So right click here and say reference. So now it's calling it calendar two. I want to call it required. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Again, go to calendar, right click reference and call it optional. Now what has happened? So far, whatever we have done in calendar table is reflecting here as well as here. But this query I can manipulate separately. This one I can manipulate separately. Now in this query, I want to keep this column. So I'll remove this column. Now how do I expand the table? This is the button called expand. When I expand, that inside table has many other columns. So it's asking me which one do you want? I just want one column called address, which is the email address. There is a checkbox here which can be confusing. This is the original column name. If I click OK now, yes, it will give me a column which contains addresses, 
but the name of the column will be weird required attendees dot address i don't really want that so that's why what do we have to do expand select the one you want and uncheck or deselect this checkbox so now we just get a nice column called address exactly the same thing i will do to the second table this is optional so i will remove the required attendee column click on expand button choose address this checkbox we have already removed so it remembers that so now i have more email ids and more nulls now we just want a list of email ids we can combine required and optional together the best way to do that is in a third table so right click in this empty area and choose new query where is this data going to come from not from file database fabric nothing we just want to combine two queries as a new one so now it will ask you which is the first table it doesn't really matter which one and then the optional and then click okay now it has created a separate table called append one let's give it a better name email ids now let's repair this list first let's get rid of the empty well just open this drop down and you will see null just uncheck this that will get rid of all the nulls now we want to get rid of duplicates take the cursor to the header where the name of the column is written right click say remove duplicates so now we got the list of people whom i have attended meetings with we can refine this further you may want to remove your name from it for example right click on it and say text filter does not equal you want to focus only on external meetings in which case you'll have to create a filter let's say your company name is contoso you don't want mails from contoso open this drop down text filters does not contain you get the domain that way all your internal email addresses will be filtered now we have finished getting the data we just have to load it so now go to close and load make sure you click on close and load to only create connection click ok now everything will come in all these are still connections it shows you four tables but we are just interested in the email ids table so right click on it click on load to and now you can say give me a table does that complete the entire story almost because after six months you are going to attend more meetings so let's simulate that so i've just put one more email id called required new contoso.com i'll send this meeting request now let's say after six months you want to get an updated version of this list what do you do right click in the list and just say refresh everything which we have done in the past will happen automatically so here is the email id which came from the newly added meeting here is another announcement we can do if i want one more column with the domain names that way i can see in a given domain which means a customer or a supplier or a vendor how many contacts do i have or to do that i'll have to add that column so let's edit this query the first step is to make a copy of this as a reference so right click on email id list create a reference give it a name i'll just call it with domain but we want one more column so right click on the column heading and say duplicate column let's call this column domain double click rename we want to split this where the at the rate sign is so right click split by delimiter it understands at the rate click ok now one column is split into two this part we are not interested in so right click remove the column this is the domain column now this one we want to import we'll again ask how do you want to import it so this time we want it as a table let's create a pivot table out of it if i want to know for a given customer or supplier how many contacts do i have just put the domain here and put address below you will see this on the other hand if you want to just count the address you can put in values and now you see which domain you have how many contacts the steps remain almost exactly the same in power bi with one difference so i am only going to show you the difference in power bi the way to select which tables you want is a little different so once you have done all this right click on each table make sure this enable load is off i only kept enable load for email ids because that's the only one we want otherwise the process is exactly same now that we have seen the overall process let's also see what else can you do with your calendar data for example go to the raw data of the meeting if you filter on location so you can group it into online and in person the other one is there is a start and end 
that means what was the duration of the meeting how many long meetings how many short meetings and so on we also have data about number of attendees so you can see how many meetings at few people or many people all day events versus regular meetings if you use color categories that list is also available and another opportunity is like we are doing analysis on calendar we can also do similar analysis on mail so if you found this useful write out share it with your team and give me your feedback to continue to become more efficient subscribe to the channel and like the video so that's it for now see you soon thank you